All right. So guys, here we are. Thanks so much for um, jumping on this call. Uh, so we're, as I said, we're recording it. So anybody who misses um, today's um, Zoom call can still catch up on things that have been discussed. So um, if you've got any questions, just, just ask away as, as I go through the discussion. But um, I guess the first thing to talk about is we've just had an update from IME New Zealand about um, some changes to the start procedure. And I am literally just catching up on it as we go and um i don't i don't think it's a huge like i think a lot of people were thinking that it's um going to be changing from the mass start to a rolling start but i actually don't think it is that i think it's more about um managing people as they enter the water going into um into zones of based on their ability which i think is going to be a great thing because um you know as if as it is with iron man um the start can be pretty hectic and having um a little bit more um a bit more flexibility around where you go on the start line is going to be a lot better for for safety for those people that want to go fast can position themselves in the front group and those people that want to be there just to get to the finish can position themselves in the later groups and um yeah hopefully it's going to make a, a more enjoyable experience for everybody so as it is right now that's all i know um uh but it looks like you have to go through an email to um identify which zone you want to be in so um I know that Rob. I know that when um, when I entered, they asked me what time I thought my swim time was going to be. Oh yeah, that's normal. So and they and it's yeah they said zone one, two, three, four, and five. I think it was. Oh okay. All oh, right, that is not normal. Right, that's new. Because it didn't. I hadn't asked Adam the question. So okay. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. Well, I, I imagine you'll be um, going down onto the beach and you'll be positioned in the start start boxes that you'll be going off in and um you know that that'll actually be quite nice that'll be good so let's crack on with this eh? so um hopefully everybody's had a chance to jump in and check out the new uh the new block training plan um i must say i had a lot of fun writing this one i only wrote it a few days ago just because um obviously um i wanted to keep up to date with how things were going in terms of the events going ahead and stuff but um i only just wrote it a few days ago and as i was going through it i uh, i was i was getting that uh getting that anxious feeling coming forward to an ironman knowing that um these are the sessions that really count and uh you know when i've come through this phase of my own training this has been the bit that i've really enjoyed the most because um this is the stuff that you actually you can see the the benefit of the training coming through you, you're doing harder more um challenging workouts than you've done before still within your comfort you know still within your zone of what's reasonable and what you're capable of but it's just it's just a really good time to reflect on on how far you've come in the last last uh few months so hopefully everybody will find the same excitement um as they go through this training but um you know it's a good good we phase so we're just going to uh jump in and share the screen um here we go so if I flick over into my plan, so the one that you guys need to, to download is um, called Build 2. So um, whether you're doing the 70.3 or the Ironman, so we just bring up Build 2. We'll uh, load up Intermediate. Um, as always, they're pretty similar layout, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. It's just that the... Um, the the duration and the types of or the, the duration of the intervals and the number of intervals are a little bit different from from uh, group to group so um 70.3 nz 2022 build two intermediate let's crack into that um so this is obviously for 70.3 athletes bear with me okay let's have a look so yeah if you read through the description of how the uh how this plan is playing out it's we really for the 70.3 we're, we're really getting into race effort and slightly over race effort intervals um a little bit different to the ironman athletes you guys uh you've got a little bit more flexibility in, in the intensity we're going to push you a little bit harder um so obviously this the swim but the swim swim workouts still pretty much the same um there's an open water swim um again in the weekends which if you wanted to swap that out for a um uh, swim race if you've got one in your area during the week you can do that by all means um like i said before every opportunity you can to do a swim race open water swim race i think you should do it um but the tuesday morning bike session vo2 hill effort so um 
find a hill that's uh, three minutes long and around about 4%, four, six, 8%, which is not super steep, but it's certainly not shallow. Um, and if you're thinking of in Taupo what a 4% gradient would look like, it would it's basically the, the steeper part of Broadlands Road when you're coming back towards the racetrack. So it's not super steep, but it's just enough to, to make you certainly ramp your resistance up as you're pedaling. So I want you to do these at, um, at harder than what you have your threshold set at. So whether you're doing them on Zwift, it'll take you through to your, um, your FTP targeted zones. Um, if you're doing them on road and heart rate, it's, um, it's towards the end of the three minute effort, you'll be, uh, I want you to be at your lactate threshold. So um, uh, pretty, pretty hard effort. And if it's perceived effort, if you're not using any of those tools, it'll be um, about seven or eight out of 10. So you're holding a little bit back, but you're, you're certainly giving it a fair amount of work. Um, whichever cadence you're comfortable with, seated standing, doesn't matter. It's just about having that, um, that time at that intensity, getting your heart rate up and um, repeating it over and over again. So as we go through the week, you'll be doing more and more of those. Um, beginner, intermediate, advanced, you guys will, will vary the amount that you do for that session. Uh, later on that day, easy jog with stride outs. That's really just to loosen the legs off, shake down a little bit. Um, stride outs obviously allow you to um, just work on technique a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice, relaxed run, that one. Because on Wednesday, we're doing... Um, a solid, what I call solid fives for the intermediates. Um, beginners will be doing solid threes and um, advanced do solid sevens. So when I say solid, that's if you're running along and you say to your mate running next to you, this is a solid pace. Like it's, it's you can do one or two word conversations, but um, you're actually working pretty hard. Um, and it's, um, it's just a, it's just a, a, a good, repeat effort and uh, so you're running at um, for five minutes um, at that um, pace around about five to ten seconds kilometer faster than your threshold pace so that's that's the pace you can hold for 45 minutes best effort um, obviously as you get through to the advance and you're doing them for seven minutes that starts getting a little bit more testing so you guys might be at the lower end of that that range, you might be closer to just five seconds per kilometer slower than, uh, faster than your threshold. Those of you that are doing the beginner and, and are able to hold three minutes, you might be pushing um, closer to that 10 seconds per kilometer faster. So just be a little bit more flexible on that. But um, yeah, I, I enjoy that sort of workout. Good fun. Next one, um, big air sweet spot efforts. So we're looking at um, a longer effort at um, just over your 70.3 pace um and it's as the perceived exertion says it's about seven or eight out of ten so it's similar to what you're doing for the uh for the hill efforts but it's going for a longer period of time um it's probably a little a little bit easier than the than the vo2 stuff because it's not really pushing over into that threshold um above threshold but it's um it's one where you just get onto your bars settled in and just just ride them out um Great done on the trainer. If you're going to be doing it on the road, just um, it doesn't matter if you have um, a few ups and downs along the way um, because it's more about just having that time at that intensity. But um, yeah, if, it, if you can avoid anywhere where you have to slow down or stop for traffic lights and stuff, that's ideal. But obviously that's a bit difficult if you're living in the city. So to be done on the indoor trainer, absolutely perfect. Um, long rides over the weekend. Again, just time in the saddle. Hopefully for those rides, you're noticing your average speed will start increasing as well um, based on your uh, perceived effort. So you're becoming more efficient. Um, you're traveling faster on the road. You're spending more time in your aero bars, um, just getting quicker and quicker. And then we go into an off the bike workout, which is um, varying over um, a little bit faster than your expected race pace, a little bit slower than your expected race pace. So we're just um, undulating over uh, up above and below your expected race pace um and that's quite a hard workout so you want to make sure that you fueled well towards the end of the bike ride so you can come off hit that run 
um, and you've got plenty of energy. And even if you're carrying a bottle of water and a gel with you for that for that run, I normally find running off the bike, I get to about the 30 minute mark, and I've I need to have some sort of fuel going in. So with these being 45 minutes, and for some of them even longer, um, you want to make sure that you've got the fuel on board for that because uh, we don't really want to have you struggling home um, towards the end of that run. Long run on the weekend, pretty much as usual. Try and get onto some nice off-road trails or some grass somewhere. Um, again, just really, really nice, relaxed. Settle just on that, Rob. Yep. Just a quick one I've, I've found that's been quite good for the run off the bike in the heat is um, sticking the bottle in the fridge before you go out. Oh, that's so, a great call. So that when you come off the bike, it's, it's nice and cold. Ready that's to go a, at lunch. Yeah, that's a very good call. So good. And likewise with a can of Coke for the end of it, have a cold can of Coke in the fridge or a cold mm. bottle of noon or something. Um, but yeah, really good call that. Um, or better still having someone right along beside you with um, with cold bottles and, and ice cubes and all, all that. And, if, you know, maybe a cold fan and some music or something. Um, so yeah, going through that week, just gradually increasing the intensity, uh, the number of the work of the uh, repeats and cr gradually increasing the volume a little bit. Um, through to the last week of that um, of the block um, as usual we have it slightly easier but it's still when you look at it it's still a, a pretty good um, amount of training there um, just with um, just slightly less intensity in the in the workout so 70.3 is good to go uh, we're taking you through to the oh, um, Ironman one any questions around the 70.3 for you guys that are doing it? Nope. Great. Intermediate. Um, all right. Ironman. Ironman New Zealand 2022, build two intermediate. Here we go. So um, a little bit different to 70.3. For this one, we're really um, bringing the, the, the base intensity down a little bit, but you've still got... Um, You've still got a decent amount of workload. You've got some hills, but um, you've got a little bit more time at um, at uh, zone two, so under threshold for the bike. So big gear hills, um, eight. I call this. So it's eight minute, eight minute hills. So obviously it's quite hard to find that in most areas. So that's good to be done on uh, on Zwift. If you find that you can find five minutes in a hill um but eight minutes is a bit of a struggle then that's absolutely fine just add a couple more intervals at the end of the <laughs> end of the workout just so you know that you're getting um the, the the total amount of work um that's prescribed for that day um so whether it's four by eight minutes um that's obviously 40 minutes of um no, that's 30, 32 minutes of work you might want to look at seven by five minutes so it's 35 minutes or um or six by six minutes that's 36 minutes so it's it's more about getting a total amount of work at that intensity over a course of the session. So um, the way this one works is is you ride the first one um, in in your normal gear, normal comfortable gear that you would normally ride a hill in, and for the next one, you go one or two gears harder. Um, so you're dropping your cadence down a little bit, but you're still keeping the intensity the same. Next one, one or two gears harder one or two gears harder. And so what you're doing is you, you're working through the range of gears, but only to a point that you're able to complete the hill without having to compromise your um, your pedaling style or your position or you're finding that you're overloading your legs at all. So it's more about just getting yourself to that point that um, that you're just, you're, you're just on the edge of still what's maintainable and what's sustainable, but, um, but you know that you're actually working at a pretty good, a pretty good work rate so um um there's a, again there's a little bit of uh there's a little bit of flexibility in how how you do that how you how you work through these sessions and now you guys have been doing long enough that you sort of know what um what is sustainable and what's not for you guys like you you actually know your body's better than i do when i'm writing these plans so so just have a little bit of um you know just have a bit of thought around how how they how you're going to execute those workouts um Thursday is a, if you can get two hours on the bike, that's really, really good. That's a real valuable session. But again, it might be a little bit difficult to get that much time in. So you could look at an hour in the morning or an hour in the afternoon. Um, just just, just getting that two hours at that moderate intensity 
um, is really, really good. And if you're um, wanting to do them um, without taking in carbohydrates, that's a good session to do that with, um, just to help you try and improve your metabolic flexibility. Um, long ride on the weekend, we're starting to get that volume up, five, five and a half, six hours, um, big time, big days in the saddle, running off the bike, relatively easy still, just because um, you've got a decent amount of running going on anyway. Um, but we want to make sure that you're getting off the bike, turning the legs over, starting the run, and just getting to that rhythm, knowing what it feels like. The other run sessions, easy jog with stride outs. Um, but the key session for their week is really this this Wednesday tempo run. So the tempo is um, is is a basically the pace that you would run for anywhere between your best one hour and your best eighty minutes. Um, so it's it's a little bit a little bit faster than a half marathon, but it's not as fast as a ten k. So you sort of find these quite hard to talk if you're if you're doing them with a group. Your tempo pace is is not really conversation pace you're uh, you're just sort of running along and um you just find yourself in the rhythm in the zone um ideally we've set the distance that you should do either six eight ten twelve whatever level you're doing it at but um if if that feels a bit too much for you then then just pull it back a little bit it's more about just having that time um at that um at that intensity and just settling in and getting used to it it's we the main reason that this sort of workout is important is it's not so much we're training your body to be good at running at a certain pace. We're training your body to recognize fatigue and how to keep pushing forward when you do start to feel a little bit tired and just trying to trying to work through the motions of as fatigue sets in, got to keep my run technique good, um, you know, keep on top of the fueling, um, just be aware of your, of your posture and your cadence and, um, your footfall and that sort of stuff so it's not about training you to run at a certain pace it's about training you to run um i've always said iron man is about running well when you feel like shit and this is basically what we're trying to do here we're wanting you to to to, to feel a little bit average you'll feel your legs from the ride the day before but it's not the sort of run that you're really pushing yourself up against the wall and struggling through it'll be um it'll be quite a quite an enjoyable sustainable run when you get into the rhythm of it um Long well, endurance. Just a question about the um, that long run on Sunday. Is it really yeah. important to do the long run, the endurance run, kind of a day after the long endurance ride? Like, if we're going to split up the workouts, should we try to keep those two following on from each other? Um, yeah, it, it kind of is. So, um, it is uh, if you can do it. <laughs> ideally, that's the way to do it because um, we do want to have you running a little bit tired. Um, and it's almost that long endurance run on the Sunday. Or quite often, you'll find for the first 20 minutes you feel pretty average because you're carrying a bit of fatigue from the day before. But then it washes out pretty quickly, and then and then you're into a nice rhythm. Yeah. If um, in the past with other training plans, I've split the long run and the long ride. So I've had maybe the long run on a Wednesday, long ride on the weekend. But it just it hasn't really worked too well with people's schedules. Being Wednesday, obviously, it's, it's a work day, and it's quite quite hard to um get through but with that with the way it's gone those days i've actually had that long run has been longer um but the way we've got it saturday and sunday um i keep the long run volume a little bit less because we know that you're carrying some fatigue so you can almost say the feeling of an hour 45 run on a sunday is probably similar to um a 230 to a 245 run if you were fresh um mm. just because it's because you're carrying that fatigue through but um, yeah, is it a problem to try and get those two together? No, I mean, I do have, um, I have Wednesdays and Thursdays off. So I have thought in the past, oh, I wonder if I should do my long oh, yeah. run during the week. Because um, I work Sunday afternoons and I just thought, oh, or am I supposed to actually do it fatigued from the bike ride? Is that the Well, point? if you were to do that, um, you, you certainly could add a little bit more time on the run because you'll be quite, you will be quite um if you were to add it on to the thursday you'd be quite fresh because you would have had um yeah maybe we need to maybe you and i need to have a bit of a chat about that because I, I want to spend a bit of time looking at that and seeing how it's best how it could be best done right yeah yeah no, that's right. cool. i mean yeah, and at the moment, i'm doing them on sundays but i just sort of thought sometimes it's easier to have yeah. time with the family and stuff sunday morning do you want um, to send me an email and i'll um yeah, i'll cool. come back to you with a better answer 
just because okay. I, I, I'll, I'll have a bit of a think about what days it would work best. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's a good question. Um, because the other, because the thing is, what we do is the the most important workout of the week is the one that you're doing tomorrow. So, you know, it's always the next day session is the most important workout for you. So the one that you're doing today, you're basically setting yourself up for tomorrow's session, whether it's an easy day or a hard day or a moderate day. So you've got to get through today's session in the in a right frame of mind and right frame of body to know that tomorrow you can you can give it everything that's been prescribed. And I say that tomorrow, like it could be every day, every day's got a tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean that exactly tomorrow, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's a good way to think about it. So, so don't just look at the session you got today and leave it all on the table, look at it and go, all right, so tomorrow we've, I've still got to be able to get up and I've still got to be able to do this workout. Um, uh, where were we looking at? So last week of that block, again, pretty similar to the 70.3, similar to what you've been doing before. Easy spin, short run off the bike, swim, easy jog with stride outs, a little bit of tempo work on the bike, slightly less endurance on the bike on that Saturday with an easy run off, but a little bit longer. And then Sunday, easy, uh, slightly less distance in the run. Um, but yeah, it, this is a really, really nice layout for where we are right now. It's, the, it's a good bit of work. And what we'll be looking at next, the next block, which is called the specialty phase, is this is that's where we're really going to be settling into either your 70.3 or your Ironman intensity. So all this work you've been doing here has been setting you up for the specialty phase and the race, the race phase, the final, the final push to the to the line. So yeah, it's all coming together really nicely. I hope for you guys are feeling the benefit of it and um, you know, seeing seeing that it is getting us somewhere. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Any questions? Um, with those, if you're going to Rotorua next weekend. Yep. Good call. Group, so, yep, group good ride? Call. Yeah, <laughs> a bunch ride. <laughs> um, that's actually a good question. So so a lot of you guys are racing Suffer next week, So, which means that um, there's a simulation session that you've got this weekend. Um, now, if you're doing the short race at the Suffer, which I'm doing, you can do the simulation session this weekend as full distance. Um, don't change it at all. If you're doing the the the, the longer race at the Suffer, I want you to do the um, uh, I want you to cut that second run of the simulation down to only 30 minutes. Okay, so you're only going to be doing the swim, the first run, the bike, and the second run is 30 minutes long. Just so you're not putting yourself too deep. It's that it's that longer running which really really kills the legs for um, preparation for a big event. And then um, going into the suffer race, depending on how fatigued you are or how serious you want to take that race, you can add the, uh, the taper plan, um, the one week taper plan and the one week recovery plan to your calendar. Um, and if you uncheck the override existing sessions box, it'll um, overlay it so then you can flick through the, those two weeks and choose which ones you want which workouts you want to remove which workouts you want to keep in just just because different people taper at different rates and you know some of you might have a different way of looking at um, at that race to others um, with so with the suffer race the only thing I would suggest is is that you treat the recovery carefully so um, it might be that you need to wait till Wednesday or Thursday before you start putting um, any any training back into the legs or you might recover quite quickly and you, you can come back into it Monday or Tuesday. So really just just do a quick assessment of how you feel on Sunday morning when you get up off, off that race and uh, um, you know maybe give it one more day than you would have thought that you, you, you might need to take off and that just, sets, that just allows you to crack back into the training again. Um, the good thing about and also the good thing about the simulation session, the way I've set it up is that it's not like the way the runs are configured, it doesn't really load your body up too much. It's not actually going to be that hard or as hard as doing a, a half Ironman or a 70.3 all out, um, which will be which will be nice. Um, the next plans are due to come out on the 10th of January, which is the week a week or so before the um, Tauranga Half Ironman. So 
we'll be doing a similar um i'll have the similar similar expectations for people that are doing tarong that they'll need to put the taper and the recovery weeks into their calendar um, and then some of you will be going through to ironman camp um, the week after tarong as well which uh, either the long one or the short one the short one's two weeks after tarong so again you, you need a little bit of um flexibility and understanding of how your body's coping as to which how, how you're going to address that that week going into towering and that week coming out of towering but we'll talk about that when we get into the next the next training block um how is that any other questions guys rob just in relation to iron man new zealand uh i haven't heard anything differently but is it confirmed that it will run if it's still red traffic light system it's a good question um and i don't think anybody knows uh well i have my doubts that it would it would it would be able to go ahead and red um but i th i'd say that taupo itself would be very keen to have it go orange knowing that it does bring a huge amount to the community so I, i'm not too sure yeah um, I, I've, I've seen the mayor over the last few days basically saying we want taupo and orange before sort of january yeah. Um, because of course they've got the Taipo Cycle uh, Taipo Cycle Challenge postponed as well as Ironman, so yeah. I, I, th I think they're really hoping for that. But I just haven't seen anything from Ironman in case it does stay in red. That's all. Well, we all, I guess we'll know on the thirteenth, won't we? Because they um, yeah. that's when they make that review. The, yeah. Oh man, I I just hope like case numbers have been pretty low the last couple of weeks. Or no, they haven't. They haven't been low. They haven't increased like I thought we would have seen the increase, or they were expecting to. So you know that could be a good sign that um, that it's starting to to come off the other side um yeah i don't know I and mean, I, 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 I said that this time last year oh it'll be go, it'll be it'll go ahead no worries and look, look what happened <laughs> three we were pushed back three weeks <laughs> yeah the one thing i do know is i mean new zealand are really really good at moving and moving an event three weeks if they need to <laughs> so <laughs> Cool. If it's anything like last year's Iron Man, then then it'll still go ahead. They'll still make sure they can put it on at some stage. But uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. If, I, if I find out any more information, I'll let you know for sure. I, I talk to Wayne um, quite quite frequently, so I'll let you know. Rob, well, and a similar note, do you know if any of the Auckland events that are scheduled in January, February are going to go ahead, like the People's Try and stuff? Yeah, I don't know because the People's Try is meant to be on the 9th of January, isn't it? Yeah. Um. I guess we'll know after the thirteenth. Yeah, because um, I've, again, seen, I've seen, a, seen a few of the run events are, are doing it, like run twenty one and stuff. They yeah. seem to be able to organise. I don't know yeah. how they're doing it. So Hooksy's Hooksy's set his events up so that he can have hundred people, um, oh, yeah. in little 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 blocks. He's done a really good job of that actually. To like for him to be able to put suffer on, that's a that's going to be a huge huge thing. It's going to be weird. It's not, it's not going to be. Yeah, enjoyable triathlon because you can't have spectators there. You're going to be really blocked off from from your other competitors. But at least it'd be something. But yeah, I I don't. As soon as I know about people's try, I'll uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know because that's something I'd like to find out about actually because that's obviously close to home. So we need to know if we can get into that. Yeah. Cool. So no, Cheers. no. So no spectators for supper, Rob. Yeah, I don't think so. You, you might want to check on that. Um, I think if it's still red, there's no spectators. Um, and if it's orange, there might be spectators. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm just taking. I'm just telling my wife to go mountain biking while I'm racing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be doing my five-hour ride for when uh, over supper. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's good. Uh, cool, guys. I I think we'll wrap it up there. If you got any other questions, but uh, um, Christine, if you can email me, just. Just email me briefly with what you were asking there, and I'll just come back to you with a better answer. Cool. Um, once I had a bit of a chance to talk about it, to think about it. Great. Cool. Oh well. Uh, stay safe, and I will. Um, yeah, I'll uh, look forward to hearing how everybody's going, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to come back with some more news in the next um, in the next couple of weeks as to what we're doing. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, Rob. Okay, guys. Thanks, take Rob. it easy. Cool. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.